Joining me today, Jessica Henry Gray here, and I am excited to be back on live with you today. Hi, Tom. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so we're just going to wait a little bit for more people to come on, and um, I'll talk about what I've done already and what I'm going to be doing here soon. Um, so let me just move this out of the way. All right, so good to see you all, and I'm excited to be here. Um, and I always just like to take a few minutes while we're waiting to talk about some of the new things that um, we're, I'm offering. Uh, so this is, uh, we're still in January, and so it's workshop season. This is the month that everybody likes to start planning ahead for their workshops. So I have a couple, and I'm going to post them down below. Uh, so I'm most excited about my upcoming one. This is in Destin, Florida, and this is the water down there. So... Um, Good to see you. So anyway, this today I'm, well, I'm going to talk about Destin, Florida and um, this beautiful water. So good to see you guys. Also, I want to call your attention to, before we get going, um, I'm going to have links below some of our special Valentine's offers that we are having. Um, I do make these bracelets. These are cultured pearls and this is um, three pearls for past, present and future. And that's on the Heaven's Hope website. So there'll be a link down below. These are $28 and um, so I'm excited to offer these. I have uh, last year's model as well available. So check out my workshops, bracelets. I've got some prints available that we've reduced a lot of prices on for Valentine's Day. And anyway, so I'm going to get going and talk to you about today's project. Um, so I wanted to address this, um, this photo and these beautiful color in the water. Um, now, when you're standing out there plein air painting, everything's moving and everything's changing. The light's all different. And um, so what you have to do when you're painting from life on the ocean water is to kind of take a mental snapshot. And you just kind of observe the way that the waves are laying like in pancake layers to create a certain illusion. And so how do you get that on the canvas? And so I wanted to show you today how to do some of that and to create some of that transparent glass-like effect of, um, of the waves. And of course, what better place in the world than Destin, Florida? If you've never been there, you need to be there at some point in your life. The sand is called sugar sand, and it just, it's, it's so silky. You pick it up, and it just, it's like silk through your hands. Um, so it's perfectly beautiful white sand. And then the water, because the sand is so white, the water is just this gorgeous turquoise. Photos never do it justice. Every picture I take, I'm disappointed that it doesn't look like what it does. So that's why you got to paint, right? Um, all right, so what I've already done here is, this is a, a 24 by nine, is it 24 by nine? I'll get the exact measurements here, hold on. I love these canvases, they never stay. Anyway, something like that. I was gonna check before I started, but I forgot. So anyway, so I've blocked in the drawing, just taking my cue from the drawing that I have here on my photo. And I'm giving the sky not that much attention because it, there's nothing happening. And then um, I divided it up in, um, I don't know, quarters or whatever. And then I've got the horizon, I blocked that in, and then where the, the shore meets the edge of the, um, the canvas, where the waves connect with this edge, um, I've made indications. And then where I want them to connect all along the rest, just in an artistic sort of layout that way. And obviously I have probably, maybe an hour into blocking this in because I didn't want to sit and fiddle around with all of that um, till we got started. So blocked it in and um, I have some new colors on my palette today that I'm going to talk to you about but I've, I've got the dark um, on top of the sky and I used a lot more of the phthalo blue for the sky and some cerulean blue and then I let it fade to almost white at the horizon then I softened and blended that and then I took ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo green for this horizon line. And I made it really sharp, and then I went over it with a soft brush, very carefully, just softening the illusion of that horizon going way back. And you can see on the photo, and I'm sure you've seen on many times on your own photos, that that looks really sharp, and like razor sharp, but you can't paint it that way, because when you're out there, actually looking at the skyline, there's a haziness to where the, the ocean meets the sky. And you wanna paint it that way and it'll create that illusion of it just going way back hundreds of miles. Okay, now as I come down into the water, 
I'll show you a little bit more of these colors that I use to get that sort of turquoise look. But I jumped ahead and I went some of the sand. I wanted to block this in first. So the sand is a mixture of some white, yellow ochre, and on, uh, some violet tones. And then um, made the wet sand and then made the watery wet sand. So there's damp sand and then there's wet. And then the water actually starts. So I've patterned out the way that the waves are laid um, on the shore. Okay, so let's get into some painting. On my coffee. And um, so I left the puddles on my palette as I had them. So I'm gonna show you what colors I have on here. And um, I have all my regular ones. Uh, titanium white, cadmium yellow light, and cad yellow medium. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. Now here's my newer blues. Uh, cerulean blue, and this is radiant turquoise, and this is thalo blue. So those are um, all by Gamblin. This is my alizarin crimson and thalo green that I always have. And then over here I have magenta and quinacridone. I can never pronounce it quite right. Um, magenta. And this is thalo turquoise. So, oh, I missed this one. This is emerald green. Oops, emerald green right there. Can't point. <laughs> so emerald green and thalo turquoise. Okay, when I teach in Destin, Florida, I've recommended uh, students getting thalo turquoise before. Thalo green works all right, but let me show you the difference here. So thalo green with a little bit of white, and that gives you like a stoplight green, okay? So that's that one. And then um, thalo turquoise with white, so you can see, is like the color of turquoise stone. I mean, I know turquoise stone can come in both of these, but you get what I'm saying there. So they, the two are definitely not the same. And sometimes I mix the two to get that color in the water. Okay, so that's what I did here. Some of these passages I have a little bit more of the phthalo green in, and some I have a little bit more of the phthalo turquoise in. And then I can come over that later with um, a little bit more information and in some of those smaller waves in the background. All right, then to approach the middle foreground here, what I did is I started just blocking in really loosely. When I squint at um, the picture here, you want to squint and see just a vague color of, an, of a passage and see what you can do to just sort of scumble over those. I noticed that there were a lot of grayish areas, grayish blue, um, in the middle section where the light of, from the sky was hitting straight down on those passages of the water like this. And so I wanna paint what color I see under those um, passages where the light is hitting it. And then once I've painted, painted that under layer, then I can paint the highlights on top and it gives the illusion of depth under the surface of the water, okay? And I do apologize if I miss your questions or comments. Please make sure, if it's something you really want to know, to post it after this video is live um, on YouTube, because otherwise I can't, I, do, I don't often see it, and I might, I'm afraid I might miss it. And for whatever reason, when I'm done with these um, videos, I can never see what anybody said. So I'm sorry if I miss you, but please, if it's something you really want to know, ask it again when you see the video on YouTube live. Okay, so let me jump in now, and... Get my napkin, my paper towel. I like to hold it right here on my palette. And I've got my linseed oil over here. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to focus on this area um, of the painting. I've got the sand where I want it. I've got the sky and that distant water there. So I'm going to focus on this and I have to move this over just a little so that I'm not leaning into the camera. All right, so this area Oops. move that over just a little like that all right so I'm um, just gonna take some of this ultramarine blue that I had already mixed up there's a little bit of a violet undertone in there of some alizarin I'll show you that again now what I'm looking at here are some of the darker aspects of what's under the surface 
So this area here where I already suggested where these waves are going to be in this composition, that is um, cad yellow light and some phthalo green and some white. Just really just suggested where those waves, where the water is coming over. And I'll focus on some more of that as I get to that area. So this little bit darker blue that I have, I'm going to put under where these waves are lifting off the surface. It's best when painting water, if you can concentrate on it, uh, think about it like a tabletop, and then you'll have a better opportunity, a better chance of getting a nice flat illusion of the, of the surface area. Try to think about, one thing I noticed when I started painting more landscapes is that they were an awful lot like painting still lifes. A lot of the same thoughts uh, you and processes that you use for painting land as uh, still lifes, you actually put to work for you in plein air and painting landscapes. You've got your foreground information and all your background information, and they have to work together, or one's going to compete to win. So just accentuating a little bit, I took some of that phthalo green and some of the blue. And this is a size 7 Rosemary um, Eclipse Flat brush, and I like this because it holds a, a nice chiseled edge. So I'm thinking flat, so one of the ways that you can create that illusion of this looking like a tabletop is to make sure that your brush strokes explain that as well. So it wouldn't work if I was going with vertical brush strokes for a flat surface, um, except for maybe like the wave. As the wave comes up, if I use a more vertical brush stroke, it would make sense. So let's grab a little bit more of that phthalo green, maybe some of that cad yellow. Back here is this wave is a little darker, standing up on itself. I'm not completely covering that cadmium yellow line underneath. You can see that there's still some of that line showing through, but that just sort of gives that nice boundary of where that wave is. I see some more of that color on this wave. It's a beautiful green, that phthalo green. You have to be very careful with it because if you use too much, it, it, it looks very artificial, like a stoplight green. <laughs> So I'm just sort of identifying where that wave is, but be careful not to cover all of that beautiful transparent color. And this is how we're going to get that transparent look. Let's take some of that. Maybe a little yellow ochre I'm looking at in the waves down below over here. They're not quite as glassy with some of that yellow ochre into that green. Yellow ochre is a great color for neutralizing. And I'll sort of tone it down with it's just a earthy suggestion. And I, I like when I'm painting water like this to think about um, sort of an impressionistic brush stroke. Put a piece down, look at it, get some more, a couple of strokes. How's that? Maybe a couple more. Come back and get more. But you don't wanna you don't wanna do this sweeping thing like this over and over and over and over again because that it doesn't give you a fresh um, brush stroked feel to your paint it just makes it feel swept <laughs> a little bit of ultramarine blue I'm seeing just a slight rise in this wave as it comes over this way a little bit of darker blue now remember I'm, I'm always thinking about layers and these layers back here the darker sublayer first and then the highlights on top of that. So a little bit more of this white and turquoise color as we come back here and longer horizontal strokes. White and turquoise. Come back in here. So this workshop here, this one in Florida, um, Destin is in the Panhandle, right up near Alabama, and it is, it's a, it's a tourist destination because the water is absolutely beautiful. Um, 
and we spent some time painting the water too. I've shortened this workshop to just three days and it's $400 for three days, um, which is a super good deal. I like to leave it up to people, the individual students to find their own lodging because different tastes and all and comfort levels. And some people like to camp and some people like the five-star resorts, so whatever. But yeah, so $400 for three days, pretty good deal. And we have a good time. There's a lot of wonderful places to eat. And, um, and being outdoors, we all feel very safe. And I've, I've never had anybody either report that they got COVID from my workshops or seem to even be worried. Um, so a little bit more white into this. And, and we always like to go around the end of April, early May, which is kind of neat because all of the the um, herons or the egrets, whatever, have had their babies and they're feeding their babies in the treetops. So it's a wonderful plein air experience. All right, so I'm just taking a little bit lighter now and suggesting some of this water, um, just some of those ripples way back there. As we get closer to us in this effect here, I'm a little bit more green into this I'm seeing in my photo here. And by keeping my brush strokes sort of choppier like that, really creates that water-like effect. Now I'm trying not to diminish what I've already done, leaving those darker brush strokes for the rise in that wave back there. Just going over the, right over the top of that and get some more blue, ultramarine blue. Let's get some more of that. In the water, I'm not really using um, the phthalo blue because uh, I just, it's such a warm shade of blue that it just doesn't seem to really lend itself to what I see going on in the water. A little bit more of the ultramarine blue, which tends to be more purple, um, mixed with the green, has a really nice earthy quality for that. And over here, there's sort of the, some of that darker grayish of these blue um, surface of the water, which again, the ultramarine blue being part of that violet family mixes with the green and grays it down. So that's a good effect over there. And so the more you practice some of these kind of wave type paintings, if you're planning on going to somewhere like Destin or a lake or the ocean, whatever, um, I like to do a few practice paintings of that type of area because it gets my mind in that state, um, taking a mental photograph of the water as I'm standing there painting it, just helps you to become more versed in what it actually looks like. So let's get a little bit more white into that ultramarine blue. That's a really nice periwinkle blue when you mix it with some white, and I'm seeing that in some of these areas where the sky is hitting the surface of the water here. Again, using these choppier brush strokes, short and sideways. And then letting those other colors peek through. Now I'm noticing um, movement. Whenever you're in nature and you notice a movement of light or movement of color, you wanna grab onto that. So here it's darker on this side of the painting and it moves to lighter, more intense over here because you've got white caps and those white caps are bouncing their light into the surface of the water, which creates a really nice um, reflected light in the surface. So we're gonna grab onto that, get a little bit more of that movement going I'll grab some white and it's mixing with some of the blue on my brush already. So we're pushing that a little bit louder. Got a little rosier. And 
and over here too. You can go a lot broader with some of these brush strokes when you squint down at something and you can see a larger passage where um, more of that color is. I grabbed a little bit of that magenta with some of this white and blue to create sort of a purple, like a lavender um, passage here where the light is hitting the surface of the water. Yeah, that's better. I'll push that over here. Anywhere else I see it? Not really. Just kind of fades over this way. Pick up some of that. Bluer, darker blue. Right in here. I just want, maybe I'll just take this one. A little bit stiffer brush. It's still a flat and it's sharp. Um, I'm just going to make a larger pool, a little puddle here of some more neutral gray blue. I'll get some alizarin into there. And it's hard to tell what color that is, so I'm going to add some white to it so I can see where I'm going. That's just sort of a earthy gray color. I see a lot of that in here. Let's punch that a little darker. And so I keep this lighter puddle here, but I'm just mixing some of the darker color right here next to it. Now again, just painting the color that I see directly below the water highlights. And this will really start to take shape when I put in the, the foam of the wave. So we'll get to there. Not, not quite there yet. Still sculpting out the waves. I love how this one here curves and goes back. So we're keeping this area flat right in here some of the darker turquoise colors as they're showing through in the water here. Those dark passages where the waves get um, a shadow cast from itself are very important to help identify the form of whatever's happening in the water. And sometimes that's hard to remember. And I see a lot of people struggling with how to get their wave to really have that illusion of rising up above the surface of the water. Well, you need these identifying features that are easy to overlook because they're not the pretty stuff. They're the background stuff that's supporting the foreground show. <laughs> so they're easy to overlook. Get some of these darker colors. Blue. Alizarin. We've got some strong shadows here. And sort of this green. And that's another reason I like these sharp chiseled brushes is that I'm able to really identify a nice clean edge there. And we've got one over here. The shape of these is very important to really capture the illusion of it going back that way. Okay, and 
And this wave, as it comes around, I'm seeing some darker little wavelets. Is that what they're called? Wavelets, the little guys? <laughs> right in here. And then here, where the this water is coming out from under this passage here. And when I squint down at the photo, it's just sort of this nice milky blue. And I'm over the blocked in area that I have here. I'm just gently, very lightly glazing that brush over that passage of the under painting. And that sort of gives that illusion of some of that color showing through kind of enhancing that transparent illusion. So I'll gently drag that over. Like that. And up here a little bit more. And that is a little lighter up here, so I'm grabbing some more white. Just watching what is happening on my photo and letting these pieces just gently lay on top of the other piece to create that tabletop look. Okay, and some over here, a little bit more of the white. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more of the cadmium yellow into some of that white. My brush is getting filled up. And just going to gently drag that over some of this in here to create that illusion of that being water. Let's take a little more light and some of that phthalo green, cadmium yellow light, some more white. That's a nice sage beach grass color. I'll just put that in here. That color that I, I can't get from my photos of Destin. Such a pretty sort of beach glass color. Now I have been kind of saving the actual waves till I get a little bit more of the these tabletop platform areas just in line, just perfect if I want them. So it's a little bit more fiddling around with those and then I'll get to the waves. Okay. This is a clean little brush like this guy. So let's get into the waves. Grab some of that sort of sage color, yellow, cad yellow, some phthalo green, squinting down at this wave that I see in here. And I'm not worried about the sea foam yet. I'll get those in. That's when the, that's always the final piece of the puzzle and when the waves really start to <laughs> look like how they're supposed to look is that last bit. And we're coming up over this passage here and this wave is almost starting so it's not really standing up yet. I'm not going to make a crest here. So we're just going to suggest that one in place. This one over here, as it comes down to the front, has a little bit more presence. So I'll 
make that a little bit brighter with the cadmium yellow, some of the white, and we've got some of that green still there, and I like that. Let's get some more. Let's grab some emerald green. That's, that's fun. I hope I got red with that. No, cadmium yellow with that emerald green gives us a nice, pretty glass color. I'm seeing that in here. The trick about these colors is that it's so exciting <laughs> that you think, oh, that's pretty, I want to put that everywhere. But you have to rein it in because you, you, you have to, it's fun to get excited about color, but if you flood it, then you've killed that effect and it, it doesn't have its power anymore. So you have to be very selective about where you're going to put those powerful pieces let them just do their job and there's that. We got a little bit darker tucking in here. And I'm starting to kind of sculpt out these um, areas as the wave comes down and meets the sand. And I'm sort of tucking it in like that. Let's get some more yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of sienna into this white mixture. Into here because that's that yellow ochre and burnt sienna is the color of the sand peeking through and under. Some more white. You can really start to see things shape up here. Let me get a smaller brush. This one I want to take and just bring in a little bit more of the lighter colors into the areas right where the water meets the um, sand. So that's sort of that burnt sienna, yellow ochre, some white. Let's get some more white in there. And I'm going to twirl and drag my brush along to create sort of that irregular effect. And that's as far over as that goes that way. Okay, so then this, I'll put some more of that down here. A few brush strokes, go back and get more. And it really starts to take on sort of that impressionistic feeling to your painting. And grab some more of that bright green. Maybe I'll just do some bright yellow. Add yellow and the white. There's a little bit of green mixing with that. That's okay. And by just dabbing it like that, it starts to really have that illusion of the light shining through the surface of the water. grayish green mm -hmm. I'll come
come up and do this wave. And that has a little bit, a little more depth to the green. So more phthalo green along the top. And that gives it a nice separation too for the crest as it breaks and comes over. Now I don't always advocate using a small brush and this one is really not for the broad expanses that I see but just smaller chunks of paint as they make sense to me. Some smaller pieces over here. A little bit more of the white as this pancake wave comes around like this. And again, using my brush to identify the shape of that helps give it a, um, some form. Curl those around. And keep making sure that my brush strokes are flat. So a little bit more of the periwinkle blue for the shadows over here. We'll kind of carve in the this foam. And just sort of play with that blue in the shadows. Get a clean brush for the white. Let's take some white. I like to put a little bit of yellow in to really make it stand out as looking sunlit. Like that. Put some way back here. There's a little bit off to the side over here. Some of these closer waves up here, I can kind of play with a little bit more of the texture and the interest in the form in there. Do a little bit of that too. And this light down in the water on the surface being cast from the wave itself is very important. Really helps to create that look of it, the reflected light in the water. Oops. And we got more of that down along this edge. 
where that light is hitting that. Now I don't want all of the focus of this painting to be over there, so I want to make sure that I bring over these white passages along this way so that we're not just right hand focused on this painting. So again, we take the brush and I like to just curl right up on the pancake edge. Just like that. Define without losing those darker accent passages. And keep those in place. And I'm, I'm not making like a solid straight line going all the way across, just a little sort of a broken jagged line like this as it comes across to suggest where those waves are just a thin little passage, not really doing much yet. But I do like this scumbling feature where you just gently drag the brush over a surface and some of the color below gets to just peek through and here I'm gonna lay this on a little bit thicker because that foam is starting to hit the sand and we have that really sharp accent right here under it which is a nice lead-in to the whole painting so we've got this sort of lacy edge of the water just foaming up on the, the beach and then it kind of comes in like that. And I want some bluer pieces of foam where it looks like it's turning away from the light. So maybe some brighter whites. And we've got a good line right here. And I think this one will give that some splashes, just some movement. Now, I could sit and play with this for a long time, but I think what I want to do at this point is just go through and make sure that all of my um, key ingredients are in place to create the illusion that I'm looking for. I can always uh, fiddle around with things more, but I have to uh, go through sort of a questionnaire. Do I have the illusion that these waves are lifting up um, if not, then what do I have to do to solve that problem? Um, for example, I've got some brush strokes back here that just some blank canvas that needed to be kind of smoothed over. And I don't mind that some of that dark is sort of accenting this a little bit more, which I think it kind of needed. There. And then um, did I get the illusion of, I really want that table surface and I don't know that I have it exactly. So a few extra strokes to suggest that are not a bad thing. And we'll let that sort of dissolve over here. And this guy. And 
maybe soften some of those. And I also like to kind of loosen things up a little bit with a palette knife. So I may just come through and just clean up. There's some areas where I think the brush strokes are kind of distracting. And I think a little bit of a play with the sort of the blending and the treatment is always a neat effect. The palette knife. Some in here. Okay, well, I think that's going to wrap that up. And uh, so I hope that that's been helpful. And so thank you so much for joining me. And be sure to check out those links below. And if you want to join me in Destin, Florida, there are still some spots available. So check that out. And I hope that you can make it. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time. All right, bye, everybody.